I know you already want to put 37s on it. <laughs> I say we do the lift first and then go from there. Well, I mean, why did we do the lift anyway? Because I wanted another two inches. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you want another two inches? Oh, Lord. Isn't that what every girl wants? Oh, Lord. It's an extra two inches. Oh, man. <laughs> What's in the box? No, what's in the box? Oh, uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? So this is probably the least expensive two and a half inch lift you can buy for the JLU Rubicon. Basically consists of spring spacers, uh, relocation brackets, and your extended sway bar end links. Jack it up, put jack stands on the uh, frame because you're gonna have to allow the suspension to articulate to be able to get the springs out. Once you have the wheel off, uh, first thing you want to do is remove the lower bolt on the shock. Right down here, it's 18 millimeter. And then go to pound town. Then going to remove the sway bar end links. Remove that nut at the top. Remove the nut and bolt at the bottom. All right, so now once the shocks in the rear are both removed and the end links are both removed, you can loosen and drop the axle all the way down. That'll allow the springs to come loose. So the springs will come out like so. This is the bump stop um, spacer. It's gonna go right here. There's two holes right here on the frame on the bracket. Drop the bolt in from the top. All right, you need two um, open-ended wrenches to be able to get into these. You're installing the upper portion of the rear sway bar link first. The next step is installing this coil spring spacer washer and the actual coil spring spacer itself. Um, the design of this is interesting to say the least. Where does that go, Kevin? All right, so what we're gonna do with this is the nut side up, washer side down, and it's gonna go above where the spring sits and it's gonna sit perfectly flush in this cup on the top side of that mount. You're gonna drop your bolt in here reach over the top and this is literally just by feel so there it goes so I've got it on there and it'll uh, it'll center once you tighten it down so reinstalling the uh, the springs and the isolators so you're gonna lower the axle all the way down and then have a friend step on the axle it weighs to... more than I do there we go all right okay. I've got the rear shock extension brackets in Nothing bolt goes there, the factory bolt goes there. Just figure that one out. There we go. All right, next up is... Sway bar end link. The yep, lower half of the sway bar end link. We're using factory bolts on there. All right, so the rear setup has been installed. It's in a vehicle. I'm gonna turn it around. Do have a little more light and then do the fronts. All right. You can kind of see the difference in height between the front and the rear. So we've moved on to the front, um, and uh, the first thing that the uh, yeah, yeah. instructions say is to remove the drive shaft. Uh, we are foregoing that step because it's ass, um, in the hopes that maybe we actually don't have to do that. So instead, we've just started with removing the lower sway bar and link bolt, lower shock bolt, and moving forward from there. So you have to drop the axle pretty low to the ground. Well, we can go higher with the <laughs> To get the spring need. out and everything, you gotta take this little brake line bracket off this back end here in order to get the, uh, the bolt for the bump stop through down into that. And finagle your way down into there. <laughs> well, there we go. That's, that's more reachable. Okay. Perfect. This goes up here somewhere. Yep. Just like so. With the isolator. isolator in there. Uh-huh. With, the with the little nipples that... Nothing has been mentioned about these little nipples on these isolators and how or what to do about those. 
because when you they don't line up with you think these little notches maybe are for them but it's not the case no nope. so you, I you, think we've just kind of been squishing this this isn't in there somewhere that's that's not yeah so lesson learned here to make sure from the start especially on the front Oh, front and rear, you make, make sure you're high enough. Yeah, make sure you're high but enough from the get-go. we'll get -go. make this job super easy. With your jack stands. But this is the beginning of the video is, just go around a spring compressor. Yeah, go around a spring compressor. There it goes. Yep. Right, Probably do a couple more. more. Try that. Yeah, I got it. Wait, where's the... Where's the what? Son of a bitch. to go inside that. Alright, hold on. There you go. Hold on. Hold on. There you go. Learn there. Yeah. Wrench a spring go compressor. Up and go uh, higher with the jersey. Yeah, and go higher with the jersey. <laughs> so now I'm going to tighten that bolt. Top on this one, the uh, bolt that's supposed to go right down into there actually does not fit. So it looks like uh, you didn't quite drill it out enough. So we're going to do that ourselves. That's for the shock extension. Yeah, the shock extension bracket. Drilled it out, fits now. Mm -hmm. Now we can continue on with our, uh, yeah. our install. Alright, so now we're installing the uh, shock extension bracket. So what they don't tell you about the uh, the front sway bar in links is that they don't come pre-pressed with these sleeves in them, like the rears did. Um, highly recommend uh, greasing them up. Like so, before uh, inserting them, yeah. So. Otherwise I won't go in. And How do we know that, Kevin? One of them. We might have one in the meat freezer right now. <laughs> <laughs> just grease it. Don't grease so just it. yeah, just grease it from the get-go. <laughs> Save yourself the trouble. <laughs> in the front, it'll tell you to reuse the uh, factory bottom bolts for the sway bar in links. Um, but then you realize the uh, the aftermarket ones don't fit on the top, so you end up having to use the factory stuff you kept on the top and the aftermarket stuff on the bottom. Last thing, once we lower the vehicle, is to reattach the track bar. After that, she should be good to go. Easiest way to reattach that track bar is to uh, get her back on the ground and just have a friend turn the steering wheel a little bit to line it up. Plenty more clearance than we originally had. You can see all of the parts that we had to install. The uh, extended sway bar end links. You can see right there the uh, spring spacers. Put on socks down in here. She looks good. We're gonna go uh, drive her around, see how she feels, and go from there. All right, guys, appreciate you watching. We've been driving the uh, the Jeep with the new lift on it for about two or three days now, and it's driving fantastically. It's a little bit of a stiffer ride, but it's not all that noticeable. We might drop two, maybe three PSI to kind of take care of the issue. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. We will be going off roading this weekend to uh, put the new lift to the ultimate test and see if she performs any better than she did before or to see if instead we'll end up breaking something. With us, you can